Simone, ask me if I'm ready to do this show. Uh, DK, are you ready to do this show? Not at this juncture, no. <laughs> oh, wow. How much, how, how much closer can Mike Tomlin come to saying, this dude needs to be fired, but I'm just not going to do it? At this juncture, DK. Not at this juncture. No. What Are we is, ready for a show? We ready? We can start it off with some legal terms and everything after this one, DK. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you ready for it, dog? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All Here right. we go. Yes. Do you think the people today will be in a good mood? Bone. Uh, I, I mean, this is a uh, no, 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 no. Uh, but but <laughs> Not at this juncture, th this is no. where this is where they come get all that. At, at this juncture is where they come get all this out. DK uh, bells have been rung, Mister Nick of Time. You doggone right, man. Yeah, Teresa was waiting on bells, and uh, we have a, a bunch of them coming in here, all related to bells. I'm having a mm -hmm. hard time getting them up there. There they go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jackson B wants to know if it's not going to happen, if it's not the bye week, is there any hope it'll happen before the end of the season? The amazing part is we don't even have to say what we're talking about here. Everybody knows. Yeah. Every, everybody knows what the topic of conversation is. And I don't know if that's sad. I don't know if we <laughs> just uh, correlate that everybody been smart enough. It's, and I kind of guess that's what everybody wants. Coach Tomlin or Mr. Rooney or somebody in charge to do is be smart enough to do these types of things, man, at least from our perspective. Now, right, DK? Absolutely. And who was it that said that when Mike Tomlin said, hell yeah, there are going to be changes? Who was it that said, what are the Steelers going to do? What are going to be their changes? They're going to try harder. I saw that too, DK. Uh, They're going to try harder. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Uh, Leah comes in hot with this one, DK. And okay. Leah's not wrong. Leah, you said it, not me. You said you're not fat, sassy, or happy. <laughs> Uh, and that's what I'm getting. That's all I'm seeing on my algorithm, on my new social media, DK. It is a level of upset that I don't think we've seen heck, since no. AB put on the fur. You've <laughs> played you've played 11 years under this man. Has he uh, ever had a solution for when times are tough other than padded practices? Let's be more physical. Let's get nasty. It's Baltimore week. Yeah. Uh, has he? All, I'm asking. Nah, has, it like said, hey, let's sit down and let's do some schematics here. Not really in that sense, DK. Uh, listeners, I mean, watchers of this show, man. Uh, this one's fascinating for me in a lot of different ways because in years past, especially during my era, that was usually the answer because there's a little bit more stability. I think you look at this situation with um, with Matt Canada and the way this team has been trending. I'd almost say since last year and definitely start of this year of the regular season, there's a lot of hope, but there's not much light at the end of the tunnel. It's kind of the way it's looking. And I'll even say this. I don't know if we've ever been in a situation this bad when it comes down to how blatantly obvious the uh, how blatant obvious the uh, the team is at this point, DK. I think that's what's most frustrating is it's bad and everybody knows it's bad, but yet nothing is done except for practice more hard DK and say, Hey, we're not ready at this juncture. That's yeah, a tough place to be at when you're trying to support a team. And when this is also the case too, standard is the standard because I've seen guys DK real quick, not, um, not, not meet the standard and get let go or get demoted. And I guess that's kind of where everybody say, hey, do what you say you always do in these moments and meet the standard. That's where it becomes frustrating. Yeah, I, I, I'm i sitting here just – part of me is speechless, okay, because I, I watch this team, yeah. and I have in the back of my head with virtually every snap, how much of this are they going to tolerate? The entire – football world is laughing at the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. Uh, and that's not to say that the defense is whatever here, but this is now going on a long period of time. This is three years of abject top to bottom failure. 
and there's no action being taken other than we're going to put pads on for practice tomorrow. And I want to I want to really stress here okay. that the way the question was asked of the head coach today, it wasn't, are you going to fire Matt Canada? It was, are you considering a, a change or have you executed a change in how either who is doing the play calling or how it's going to be called? Now, that left him open for saying, yes, we've got other people in the room that we can consult yeah. on this sort of thing. It's going to be more of a community process, which it might be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But Moan, he is not the type to serve up steak like that for the rest of us, is he? No, not not like this, DK. Uh, and it's almost as if his frustration is, 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 is probably either taking over him or he's not reading enough into it and trying to stay calm. The biggest... God, dog, this is such a hard one, DK. It is, because there's nowhere to go. He's nowhere. backed into a corner, and I'm sure he hates it. And, and the only thing that you can think of with this one is you got next week to fire somebody or promote somebody else, DK. In the bye week, yeah. And, and, but that's the thing. We fought that and, last year, remember? Uh, we did. We did think that <laughs> last year, too. But here's the thing. Do you – if Baltimore blitz you, is it more than just Coach Tomlin? I mean, is it more than just Matt Canada in trouble, Doesn't matter. Too? Doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. no, I'm, I'm asking the question for through for the duration of the season. Like, if you get smacked by Baltimore, at you home? know, at home, is it more than just Matt Canada you have for blood for? Because a lot of the stuff that was said, I'll say this as a as a as a football player, the fourth and one situation. DK, you know what? Matter of fact, let's get into the hey Mona uh, a couple minutes earlier because I feel like you this is all going to be a tease to get to the hey Mona segment. We can really break stuff down and get past our three chefs too because there's there's a lot, man. Because again, Al Sauce is kind of saying this too. This this is gonna where, where is it? Where is it? this is gonna come into play at some point? It's already happening on the big networks, DK, and I know a lot of people aren't in that building when it comes down to what's actually happening, but. This, which from Owl Sauce says, this AI sauce, fire tumbling chat since Sunday. I don't think we've ever had that inside of oh, Hines. Nothing close to that. Akershore. No. So I'd much rather get to the next phase of this, DK, so that we can really uh, have a powwow. And you're going to see the Fire Canada chants, though. You're going to hear those. You're okay. going to hear those after the first series. After yeah. the first three and out, you're going to hear him. And then I got I got to believe it'll definitely be You know how I know that? Because I was Talk also to the same guy that told you that they wouldn't be doing anything of the kind in Las Vegas or Houston, and everybody's here like, oh, no, is that true? Is you that true? You did say that. You, you, could only, that. you can only do that in Pittsburgh. Those were Penguins fans who started that. Yeah. Uh, and and that was those. That, that's a Pittsburgh thing. That's not going to happen with people just flying into the game uh, from, from somewhere else. Uh, that's got to be... You know, home, home yeah. front, home yeah. front. Let's that uh, Pittsburgh's team, right? Uh, so did the chief. We're not America's team, he said. This yeah. is Pittsburgh's team, and Pittsburgh is. Say it. P O D. I was gonna say the other <laughs> word, but yeah, we'll keep it family friendly, DK. Yeah, we will. All right. When we come uh, back, the only segment that matters in Barcola. style. Don't miss this one. And that's Hey Moan, y'all. Whoo. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. Oh, boy. Okay. Before we get rolling here, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you want to become a member of this show, go to dkps.net slash join. Put that into your URL. Become part of our community. We have over 1,300 members. I don't know the exact figure, but I do know that it continues to climb toward our ultimate goal of 2,000. Uh, go ahead and do that. Okay, we have a community going here. Also, yeah. we have, hey, we have merch. Look, <laughs> merch. You rep me, DK. That's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> <laughs> DKPS.net yeah. slash Ramon shop. We also have the Ramon mug. 
I am repping Moan in every conceivable way I have uh, with my lovely assistant over here. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, let's make a deal here. We yes, have hay. indeed. That's we have surprise. the hay moan. Look at that. This is a really good fabric. Cotton. That's nice. It's just comfortable cotton. Yeah. But don't make me go change in the mind, DK. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's at dkps.net slash Ramon shop. So we have stuff. We also have some really angry uh, participants in here. We do. And uh, PA Bow Hunter says Terry Bradshaw. Terry, 50 years ago. Come on, guys. Jeez, who cares? Sean says loyalty is killing me. We need to get modern and move on. This is the National Football League, not your neighborhood football team. Moan, it is loyalty that's killing this. It it's is. loyalty. It's the whole we never change anything. We're the Steelers. Is is it's uh, let me okay. So let's say this then. I, I have to ask the question. I'll answer it too while asking it. I just like to engage this, okay, DK. Loyalty is killing us. That's also been a huge bragging point for this organization, yes, too. And remains so. And remain so, right, DK? Mm -hmm. uh, also, we've seen other franchises beg and brag about the way the Steelers operate. Is this an ownership situation or is this a head coach and GM situation too? Because Omar is new, so do you blame him? Do you blame Mr. Rooney in the front office and the managing partners? Or do you solely blame Coach Tomlin and all of these things right here, DK? Like, that's kind of where I'm at on the loyalty part of it. I will say this too. I think it's flagrant to kind of have Matt Canada be the one calling the call. So I don't deny that loyalty when it comes down to Coach Tomlin nipping this in the bud, okay, or just saying, you know what, we're washing our hands. It's going to be somebody else. I get that one. But I feel like for the most part, our crowd, one, don't want to hear a right or wrong answer. They just want action. And with that being said, oh, we're at, is it implode everything and restart? That's always going to be the back end of this thing, DK. Richard Wise says, hey, Moan, when does it become necessary for Mr. Rooney to step in and fix the issue himself? They that hardly ever interrupt themselves with football business. But the, they hardly ever interrupt football business. It's all I ever say. Team games to play. Yes, it is, DK. And again, things can be done to help you win more of those 13 games. How does what you just said, which you're right, how I, does I that know. take precedence over this? Because it's one season and you're still in the fumes of a franchise quarterback who just left you, DK. That's how. Like that, that's why nobody's it's not many. Well, there's a lot of living folks, but a lot of folks have enjoyed the, the spoils of what Ben brought to Pittsburgh. And then, of course, yes, a good quarterback covers up deficiencies from offensive coordinators to bad. They wanted the Super Bowl with Ben because with a bad, and they will tell you this, offensive line that gave up historic numbers of, of, of sacks, right, DK? You ended up going into the, into the playoffs of a sixth seed and winning it all. So to suggest that bad times means changes, you've seen bad times, and you still still stay in the mud. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying it's excusable. And I'm not saying that changes aren't supposed to be made. But this has been the case with this organization for a very long time. All of us fussing and yelling and cussing and wanting this to happen when it comes down to Coach Tomlin, Matt Canada, and Terrell Austin. If is if he's telling you, if Coach Tomlin telling you, not at this juncture, which sucks to hear, right, DK? That answer was for no, that the question was good, but the answer lit a, a wildfire, did it not? Well, Hang on. Hey, go okay. ahead. Go ahead. Go Hang ahead. On. Go ahead. Go ahead. Here's my problem with not at this juncture, no. Okay. Here's my problem with that answer. If you believed in your offensive coordinator, if you really believed in the offensive coordinator, what's your answer? My answers were sticking with him. If I that's believe it. in him, that's it. Oh, oh, okay. There's no, no, there's no juncture. There's no not at this time. We realize, we get it. This is in parentheses. We get it. He sucks, okay? We get it. He can't do anything right. We're getting clowned all over the league. We're getting clowned by our opponents. They're having, they're throwing halfback option passes for touchdowns to run the score. Yeah, up. they are. Yeah, they okay? are. That's what's happening here right now. When, and, and that's okay. That's all okay. Not at this juncture, no. That, that the person who should be the most fearful in theory after hearing that, is Matt Canada. He should. He but, should, but I don't know that he will because he's going to – if they go out and they have themselves a 13-10 you know, to 10 win, 
over the Ravens this week, who's going to be firing a coordinator? Who's going to do that? Nobody. But here's here, here's the thing when it comes down to it. You're right. If he was endorsing Matt Canada, he would have said, we believe in our guy. Yeah, We're quit asking me that. Stuff. That's what he'd say. Come on, that's but, ridiculous. But, okay, so is a week too late? Is a week late too late? Is what I'm asking you. Like, the business of what they're trying to incorporate or what most fans want has to almost happen during the bye week, DK. But here's the other pro tip about that, too. Here's, here's the actual pro tip about firing Matt Canada right now, y'all. And this is a player. I'm not being pro Coach T, pro Steelers, or pro Matt Canada at all. Here's the pro tip about firing Matt Canada right now. You still, for the most part, are going to run his playbook. Oh, you have to. But that doesn't mean you can't make better usage of it. So if if, if his playbook is what you it is. You have to do that. So I hope you're saying he's an incompetent that. play caller. No, I would say he's incompetent at everything. Okay, but the playbook, even itself, the playbook, yeah, but the because play, that can, also has to play a factor in it, though. DK is you can, whether it's Mitch, Mason, or Kenny, yeah, they have or to the operate line. under that, or uh, the uh, offensive uh, line and wide saying, receivers. What, that's yes. one of the things here. I'm tired of seeing these guys look over to the sideline like, what the hell was I supposed to do there? Okay, that's fair. Okay, that's fair. I'm tired of the running backs having that same. It, it's everybody. Okay, the the tight ends are the ones tripping over the linemen's feet. Uh, I, I'm I'm tired of all of it. Okay. okay. This yep. is this is this is really bad, and it's not about the fans. It's not about giving the fans about or the you and me or anybody else. It's about what's on the field. It's about winning and losing games. Last I checked, right? Wasn't that supposed yeah. to be the important thing? That's here? our business is winning. That's his every quote. week. That's his quotes. Uh, Don says, "Hey, Mona DK, Ooh. won't you speak Penguins fans chanting Sunday? It's going to be the whole stadium. It's going to be an embarrassing broadcast." Okay. I want to clarify something here. Please. When I refer to the Penguins fans, it's this chance, Matt Canada chance, I've learned, started in section 136 <laughs> by a group of Penguins fans because they knew the intonation. They were the ones that started the fire high school. But it did spread. It's not yeah, like it was it just Penguins fans, okay? It started with Penguins fans. And that's why these things don't happen in other stadiums or so, Houston or Las Vegas. So here's the next question too, DK. I think it's pretty <clears> solid <throat> from Alex W. It says, hey, Mo. Will a blowout loss to Baltimore help push them to make the changes we are all asking for? I think the answer is yes. I mean, you think. Th- that's 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 the stopping point right there. A- an embarrassing AFC divisional game. I think everything changes from there because you have the time to. We're not talking about a win, you know, a how. We're talking about a win at this point, W-H-E-N. And here's the thing, too. I almost feel like if, if the Steelers do win on Sunday, you still get a change, man, because if the players aren't satisfied, more times than not, the players outlast the coaches anyway, DK. Am I right or what? They yeah. outlast the coaches anyway. So you got to listen to the product that you've given all this upfront money to when it comes down to what you're looking for on the field. I think this team is capable of winning games and close games and not getting embarrassed the way they did in Houston. That was embarrassing, DK. It was hard to look at that game. It's hard to watch the highlights and the conversation behind that game. It's terrible. Is it? I don't think I've ever seen many as as much as a fan favorite Coach Tomlin is ever have this conversation start this early. So much so, I got buddies of mine lobbying for Chicago to say they want them in Chicago. Think about this, man. Has this conversation ever been this real? It, so it no, was embarrassing. I love this from Ryan Lytle says, my question is, do the Steelers know how bad they are and just don't care? Or are they oblivious? Ryan, I want to start this one. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, because I, I there's like something, this. there's something a little bit unusual about this scenario. This isn't last year. This isn't the year before when you knew it was just, let's ride out Ben for one more year. It wasn't 2022 where it's, it's the new quarterback. The expectations were really low. We, one thing I, I I hear from a lot of fans is we were all misled by the preseason. We were no, you weren't. Right. No, you weren't. Those players were out there making those plays. They were capable of making those plays. They were capable of good execution. What ended up happening was they got into game situations, and their coaches, plural, e s coaches have gotten schooled for the most part, first by the Niners, then by the Texans, and somewhere in between there with the stuff that Browns and Raiders or whatever. But that's what happened. The play. So your expectation, Ryan, 
is how bad they are. It's because they know that the players aren't bad. Yeah. Not this time. That's where I was going. The team has a lot of talent. It's just not being maximized. That it, is it's correct. Just not being maximized. Whether that be the plan offensively or defense, it's the reverse. It's being minimized defensively or offensively. It's not legitimately right, DK. It's okay to say these things. Do you like George Pickens? Yes, the hell you do. Pat, yes, you do. Although Pat Keep got going. blew up, you love them all. Broderick is finally in. Also saw. This is what you're dealing with when you're dealing with you for talent, too. Whatever PFF suggests, he had a bad game as far as his grading scale went. This is what the incorporation of youth will potentially mean, although they shall get better over time. I was in situations in that team where we had some bad stuff going on. And I'll say this. The separator between this group and our group is we were vocal. We had proven a whole lot to be able to say what we did and didn't want. Remember, we had that conversation. Y'all saw on social media where Le'Veon said that Ben would absolutely call his own shots when he didn't like Todd's plays. Well, guess what Kenny can and cannot do? He can't do what Ben does. He's not in the position. I don't even know if he knows the NFL well enough to make those types of plays and calls in year two. Again, this is a transition when it comes into what this team is running into. And it looked good putting lipstick on the pig, like getting the dog on offensive lineman that you needed going to get a veteran wide receiver to help this team grow a little bit and then finding some gems in the draft. But that doesn't make you a good team. It just means you got good players. Todd says it's time to no-show the games. Ah, that Todd, money's already made, here. Todd. Yeah. That, the, the tickets not, are already sold. Yeah, this is when people start getting a little bit goofy. And, and TV no offense, money is still going to cut a big old check. Doesn't make any difference. Al you says... Hey, Mona DK, can it get to the point where the fans turn on the franchise the way the fans have given up on the Pirates because of ownership? Hey, Al, Pirates just improved by 14 games year over year, and their attendance just went up 24%, one of the biggest increases in all of Major League Baseball. But facts. Yeah, again, Al, money's already made, and that sucks to say. Checks that broadcast check is about to come through, regardless if you go to that game or not, or stop booing. Think about how bad the Browns are, and they still were able to pay Deshaun Watson a guaranteed two hundred million dollar contract. We're fighting billionaires when it comes down to what they're capable of doing in this, and yeah, it's, it solely comes down to just either firings or not at this point. Yeah, I'm purposely including some of the more out there stuff so that people can get a scope. For like, this is Richard Stone saying Najee Harris is trash. Did you not watch the game? He probably had his best game so far. <laughs> did you? If they all went at it the way he did in that third quarter, uh, I'm not sure they would have won, given how out schemed they were. But they sure wouldn't have been embarrassed. I got a good one, man, DK. Uh, mm -hmm. I had to say from Marvin, I thought that was real solid because this honestly would lend itself to a lot of stuff. Uh, this right here. Also, if our coach is a defensive minded coach, then the defense shouldn't be this bad. Who do we hold accountable? It's two parts on this one because Marvin actually had another one in here too, talking about the offensive coordinator. A defensive minded coach usually craft their team a certain style of way. Um, it's defense first. The guy you pick for offensive coordinator, you want to be just good enough because the really offensive coordinators get poached to be head coaches. And you're continuously changing. Uh, I have seen that conversation come up about Tomlin and his tree of coaches. Nobody has – he doesn't have a lineage as far as it goes with guys going in and out of the building. And that's primarily because he, he's a defensive-minded coach. The offensive coordinator, Bruce Arians, was fired and let go and had to retire and come back before he actually get another shot. Randy Finkner, nothing, right? Bruce Arians got something, but after the fact – and from there, I don't see Matt Canada doing anything than probably a small D1 college somewhere, okay? When you have a good coordinator, they're going to get poached. I'm not saying or, or making an excuse for not hiring a competent guy, but when your thesis is run the ball, play good defense, it's kind of hard to pick a guy that you know can either take your job or get poached and you continuously bring in new coaches every other year. That's just my take on how you select guys. Again, to, to, to run up the points and scores that you want. You almost have to go find an offensive-minded head coach yeah. to have some sustainability. Let's talk about Shanahan, McVay. Let's talk about uh, those types of guys, right? Even Bruce mm -hmm. Arians from when he went to Tampa. 
Rick says, yes, I love this response, by the way. They're not physical because they were all unsure of what exactly to do. And the other side was the exact opposite last week. Moan, that does happen, doesn't it? The, you know, the Texans are over there. They see exactly what's coming. And you're on your side going, what the hell? It is. Okay. <laughs> it makes a difference, doesn't it? That, that that physical side of it, I kind of figured that was going to be the case. Uh, as players, though, it makes you more frustrated. It does because sometimes you just get your butt beat. And that's what Houston did. It's, it's kind of hard to point the blame as saying we need more pad. I hated those days. DK. I did because I'm like, I'm giving my all. I don't know who is not being physical, but it's honestly time for you to call those people out directly. Let's be honest about it. Um, um, Nate Herbig was bad this week. Yes, he okay? was. Mason yes, was, was bad. Pat Frymuth was bad this week as far as blocking. He okay, was. let's talk about that. Kenny throwing the ball short, rolling out was bad. The All run bad. defense was bad too. Call uh, these about, guys about out George, specifically. George, I mean, we we all love George Pickens, but you got a linebacker on you in the end zone. Yeah, and the when? ball comes at you, catch it. When? Uh, Win that it, ball. Win that ball. A hundred percent of the time. Every, everything I feel like that happened in camp was washed away. That's kind of what it feels like at this point, DK. Now, I don't know if this is his operating style as far as Coach Tomlin is, and I doubt that's the case because I've seen him operate differently or it's just that he's handcuffed because he can't fire a guy going into the regular season like this or regular season week. You wait. That's honestly what we are. If nothing happens on this bye week, we riot. It's simply what I say, DK. Not actually, but just in the sense of feeling. This is wild. Roy says, an organization is defined by the worst behavior you're willing to tolerate. I love your point that loyalty has become the product, not what is put on the field. Whole full stop, Roy. Full stop. Leave that up there for a second because we touched mm. on this yesterday. Roy, this is fine when you want somebody's head chopped off. Did you have this same conversation with Terry Bradshaw was getting in trouble early in his years? Okay. When Ben got in trouble. When A.B. did his thing and we still cheered him on. Okay, there was a fan base that waited on, on, on players for hours to show up. Like, think about all that you're saying right now. is defined by the worst behavior that you're willing to tolerate. Think about that. Every organization got some dirt. It's okay to say, yeah, that's fine and dandy. But in all actuality, the only thing that's going to substitute this is a, is a, is a firing, D.K., Everyone's always worried about George Pickens' feelings. Pickens is getting Screw more ticked feelings. off each game you can see on his face. I don't care what I can see on his face. So, he was in coverage on a – I had a linebacker on him. You know, by the way, nobody's talking about that because everyone likes George, so he couldn't possibly have done anything wrong. They're all bad right now, except for Chris Boswell, and okay? Before, eh, Presley. And, and Presley before he got hurt. Okay, your kicker's good, yeah. your punter's good. That's it. Oh, and That's I keep it. seeing Even this. Steven TJ Watt was a non factor against a grocery bagger. Yeah. How does that happen? Every sometimes, uh, no, I, I, I say this, but hell, you got smacked against the doggone 49ers too. So everybody have a bad day. It's just you don't want to have two bad days within four weeks. And there's been two bad days, DK. That's true. Joshua Dobbs says, bottom line on both sides of the ball, they can't beat the zone on O, and they can't cover zone on D. Watch the Sorry. film. Uh, before we move on to the to the next Hey Moan entry, I want to remind everybody that at the Get-Go Cafe and Market, quality is at the core of every menu item. They have three expert chefs. <laughs> Let's call them Mike, Matt, and Terrell. <laughs> So that every sub burger, salad, wrap, and drink, and app is crafted for what they refer to as craveability. Order your favorite entry at the Get Go Cafe and Market today. Better believe it. I got I got a good one too. Just came in at three thirty four Central DK right mm -hmm. here, and this is what I honestly been thinking. It's great for us, but this is uh fascinating. Pittsburgh Toddy goes, hey, Mon, why is it many more people turn up for the Steelers podcast, this podcast, this on Foster show, after a loss? The Tomlin haters seem to come out of the woodworks. Negativity gives you something to talk about. 
Uh, it just does. Yeah. Did anybody wonder what the subject was going to be today? Hmm. I no, wonder what, we what, what DK what and Moan have for us today. Uh, <laughs> the, the positive energy does nothing except for becomes the expectation. Also, Coach Tomlin said he wants you guys fat, happy, and sassy. I know I hate to keep using it because I almost feel like it's cliche now, but Toddy, it, this happens in losses. Football is a very emotional game. It just is. Okay. Uh, people need a place to vent also. Yeah, there's part of it. Part of that's true, okay? And part of it is also is they want to hear what's real. And I think I would hope that people have trusted me and the guy over there next to me uh, to tell it like it is in both directions and to work just as hard to gather information in both yeah. directions. If things are going really well the way they did in the preseason, what were we talking about? I things mean, are going really well. Real good. We got it's detailed. You know, we did. Sergio brings up another point too. Can Khan fire Canada? Yeah, I no, mean, he's the, G uh, he's the yeah, GM. Yeah, but, but that's got to happen in how, concert with how everybody. much of a partnership is this though? But here's the other thing too. If you guys want some hope, and it's always like this, but I don't see it happening this way. Most new GMs, athletic directors at colleges, whenever they come in, they usually want their guy. Here's the thing: Omar and Mike T are guys. They've been that way. They kind of grew up in that Steelers organization together. Now, I don't think it'll have a situation where you keep an incompetent offensive coordinator for the entire year. I kind of want to go on the record and say next week is, is D-Day. It's, not, it's Black Monday, DK. Essentially, if it definitely goes the way we think it should go on, on, on Sunday, Baltimore's I mean, a better team, more stable there, team. There's a lot of people asking themselves, and think about this, whether or not it would be better for the Steelers if the Ravens just won. That's a hard life to live, man. I, I know, Moan, but you know, at some point, something's gonna have to happen. You you actively okay? hoping your team loses? If, if you see that your That's management, you know, I heard Pirates fans doing this in, in 2019. Okay. They had just a terrible management that had been in place for 12 years. They hated the owner, they hated the GM and everything else. And what do you know? They yeah. stunk and all kinds of moves were made. They cleaned house. That's fair, TJ. Th this is, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm not going to sit here. Let's put it this way. I'm yeah. not going to sit here and endorse it, but I'm I'm not about to look down right. my nose at it either. Let me, let me put on my player's helmet for just a little bit on this one, DK. And this is mm -hmm. why you guys come to this is to hear this other side of it too. As a player, I'm not looking to lose. Because if we lose in the rate that you think this team should just to get rid of a guy or two, the entire team gets imploded. And when it happens, guys lose their jobs. Um, you would probably set your organization back, not just for one year, probably about five years, too. So when we're asking for this to let go of one guy, I'm hoping that that one guy does get let go so that it doesn't have to resort to that. Again, I'm not saying that Pittsburgh can be uh Cleveland or B Houston or B Carolina. But when you go full overhaul, it ain't a it ain't a quick fix. And maybe that is needed too. Ryan Lytle is taking the generous stance of offering yes. a gift membership for every point that the Steelers score on Sunday. Oh. So we're gonna have three of them. Oh, uh. Come on, it's too easy. DK, what what happens whenever what happens if they beat Baltimore? What's that, Ramon? What happens if they beat Baltimore? I I'm actually I'd be more worried about that because now all you have is status quo. Yeah, you know. And, and, and here's it, where we are right now. Bob is set back for five years. We haven't won a playoff game in seven. You've made it to the playoffs. I know winning the Super Bowl is what you want, but whew, you're not a Super Bowl team right now, period. I am we blown aren't. away. The, the speed with which these comments are, are flying in here. We have 849 people watching. We're going to get to some of the Ooh. ones that have come in with contributions. Uh, Marvin, yeah. did, uh, thanks for that. Mr. Wallace, Swan says, with a $10 contribution, outside voices can bring clarity I am dumb, and I know this. Everyone needs an outside voice for accountability. It's a sign of good leadership, right? But yeah. what do you do, Swan? Where do you you just go and shop at the offensive coordinator store and bring somebody in in what would be week six? 
Yeah. Okay, following the buy and say, make this okay. It, it, if if Canada's gone, you got to understand this. The offensive coordinator is going to be some amalgam of, where is he? Glenn Thomas, Mike Sullivan, not the Penguins coach, but the quarterback's quarterback coach, coach. And something else. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe including the head coach, okay? Even though he's not an offensive mind or whatever, but he can just be in there and say, no, 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 I'm tired of that play. Throw yeah. that one out. <laughs> Rip it right out of the book. Throw that one out. You know, yeah. ideally all the jet sweeps and everything else. Okay. Yeah. and But it's not going to be from the outside. And, and Slap Murphy comes in with a solid point right here too. We aren't now a Super Bowl team, but one month ago we were on our way to being one. Yes, preseason, and you were winning. Winning breeds momentum, but, but losing does. Players showed you something. That's the part that I can't get past here. And in spurts, they've showed you some of that same stuff. Remember how excited you were about Calvin Austin in I the preseason, was. and right? still am. I see and, some of and, it. And what did he do in Las Vegas? He delivered right? on that. And guess what happened when they tried the exact same play again out of the exact same alignment? You know what happened? Film. Steven Nelson saw it on film. Steven Nelson talked about it publicly afterward. He said, they ran that play in Vegas. It's not like we didn't know what was coming. So he that, said this because he actually would be a guy that would say that, which is great. So that's the root of our problem then, DK. Oh, it very much is. Predictability. That's why I tell people, don't, don't regret having been excited about these players in the preseason. They're real. What's coaching them is trash. Chris says, hey, Moan, what kind of conversations is Tomlin having with Canada? If Canada is not getting fired, how at all is he being held accountable? Does the coach talk to his co – how does he talk to his yes. coordinators, to his positional coaches, Moan? From you're, my you're understanding, there? very strong and transparent. Uh, the product ain't good. He, As honest as he's been with players, I'd almost expect that to be the issue, too inside of that building Chris that's about as far as I can go without actually telling you what he said because I don't know exactly what he said but nobody though one of those 32 jobs as an NFL head coach nobody wants to lose it especially get fired over too it's either him or coach T at this point and I almost feel like coach T gonna save himself well get about that then you can't you know? do it until next week though you can't you, you say what you, you can't do it till next week that's that's what's okay. So you, okay, you live in that world, and 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 I and I respect I that. You, yeah, you, you because because you. I ain't saying I'm right, and I ain't no, saying no, no, that's the right I approach. Think, but, but you, you might be because of the the time that involved, the preparation that's involved, the shakeup uh, that it means. You gotta yeah, have a so few days away to deal with that. That's almost like a death. You gotta maybe, be able. You gotta be able to get away from it for a minute before getting back to normal. But maybe that's what not at this juncture no means. Next week. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> Roland the tenant says, "Hey DK, I've heard Art Rooney the second is actually to thank for Canada's job security." Um, I mean, nobody's heard that. No offense. I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I mean, I it's until until that comes from, you know, at the owners' something meeting, something other than asked. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah that's at, the, that's a the, difficult thing for anybody to know. At okay, the owners' meetings, that can be asked, uh, and in that in that point right there, Mister Mister, I mean, uh, Mister Rooney ain't gonna talk too much right now. This is Ooh. pretty cool here. Yeah, Metal Boy Game says, "Hey, Moan, I'm Christian from 30 minutes south of you in Mount mm -hmm. Juliet, and me in Mount Juliet. Uh, that's the city oh, right you, down the street. Oh, you, yeah, you. Okay, that was a university. Yeah. Okay." I bought my first Steelers tickets for the Titans game on November 2nd. I'm ready for my first renegade. Is it awesome? See, Nothing we're like allowed it. to have some fun today. Nothing like it. And I'll say this. I'll be on the sideline with my headphones on, acting like I can't react to it, just so you know. So uh, that that's going to be a weird week for me, DK. It is. It is. When I have I'm to just, come up for that Thursday I'm just night looking game. forward to it because you'll be here. Yeah, no doubt, man. Yeah, uh, Brian uh, says, um, I feel like Tomlin is a good leader of men, but bad at schematics. We need good coordinators. We usually have a good defense against bad coaches, but the good ones always do as they please. Sit here to argue. I'm not going to argue that. Uh, yeah, uh, bad coordinators will get you fired if you don't cut bait. That's just simply how it goes. That that's uh, That is one of the reasons why – Munchak was fired as a head coach in Tennessee. That's the one thing I've heard for certain about him. 
that's what will happen if changes aren't made or you uh, don't have the backing of the ownership. That's just how the cookie crumbles. This is a winning league, man. I know, Swan, y'all. Swan says, what I mean in this case by outside voices, he's clarifying his previous okay. uh, question there, is letting other coaches call the plays. Tell Canada he needs help. <laughs> I'm not sure that's how you wanted to phrase that, but, dude, you need help. <laughs> but but here's the thing, though, too. There should be a run. Pat Myers should have his hands on the run game. He should. I know Munch did. If if Canada has that big of an ego to figure out what the O-line want to run, shame on him and he should be let go. The quarterback's coach should be in the meeting lockstep with whatever Kenny wants to do in accordance with the offensive coordinator, okay? Those two dudes for sure. The receivers get whatever the, the, the quarterback and the offensive line don't want, essentially. And the quarterback is going to tell you the routes that he love and don't love. If they're not communicating, then there's a bigger issue at hand. I know for a fact. We would throw out runs on Fridays because we didn't like them on Wednesday and Thursday because hmm. Munch was in house with them and have those conversations. And we were also very vocal and saying, we don't like that. It don't look good. Toss that one out. Or whenever we got to the games on the say, field, run. practice is that in what you're talking meetings. about? No, in, oh, in the meetings. meetings. Oh, okay. Before practice and after practice. And well, during the games. Where did you like them? That's what I'm asking. Where didn't you like them? Those early Friday morning meetings. Okay. If, or, or those Thursday afternoons when we met with the running backs before going to Pouncy House. Hey, D'Angelo, y'all like this Le'Veon? You like this? Rosie, you bl- you good with blocking this one? No, nah, I don't like that one. Throw it out. Or during the games, why are we fighting City Hall? Spread them out. I called Marquise last Monday. Yeah. Pounce. Man, correct me if I'm wrong. What's going on, Mo? I was like, dog, when it came time for us to run the ball, didn't we go more nickel set to kind of spread them out and motion Le'Veon in? It's like, yeah, we did that. It's like, why were we going to fight everybody else when we get the job done with just five or six in the box? Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I know, because we spoke up about doing those types of things. Again, this is a young group that but can't who would go you communicate? Who would you communicate Munch. that with? You went to Munch, and you felt confident that Munch had easily the route that he needed to take to Todd Haley or whoever. And was stand on it. Again, the players is what rocked the boat, good or bad players, DK. You get a horrible franchise quarterback, it ruins your organization, does it not? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. DeMond comes in with a 1999 contribution, says, I'm a diehard Steelers fan, period. Win, lose, or tie. I love my team till I die. Hell no, I don't ever want to lose, referring to the the, the sentiment heading into the Baltimore week. Hopefully, we turn it around sooner rather than later. I will take whatever comes, good, bad, or ugly. Hit the like button. He comes in at the end. I mean, I stand all I'll say is I won't judge. Yeah, I, I, I think it's awful that it comes to this. It's hard. Okay. Losing. That's it's awful that it comes to everybody wanting some, not everybody, obviously, some wanting this to happen so that the, Somebody can be spurred to meaningful action. You know, yeah. Jesse's had enough. Jesse says, really, I want my money back. I don't like what I bought. RIP 2023 season for us. You know what's funny, though, Moan? What? 2023 season, they're two and two. You still got 14 games. I know. But 13. 13. 13 games. Yeah, and most of the tougher travel is going to be out of the way pretty soon. I mean, I'm just saying if they rally 49ers on the schedule, the rest of the way, I know, but here's the point though. If you do this, that's why I keep referencing that 13 to 10 final this coming week. Okay. It's your worst case scenario because you beat the Ravens. You're doing this to the crowd on the way off and you aren't changing a blessed thing after that. Mm Mm-hmm. DK, and, and I just always, I'll, I'm with everybody's feelings and emotions on this, but I just want to warn you about this too. The Cleveland Browns wanted uh, Deshaun Watson's head after that Steelers loss. Yeah. They wanted him bad. Yeah. Then he goes out and beats, uh, they wanted DTR, Dorian Thompson Robinson as their quarterback. Well, they got Dorian this past weekend. Dorian was bad. Sometimes that change, mm-hmm. you just need to work through it a little bit. And I know it was Baltimore they ended up playing, if I'm not mistaken, this past weekend, and they got smacked by them. But these changes, man, is a little wild. And to want to lose is uh, it's kind of beyond me, man. I get it, though. I do. I hear y'all. Justin Work says, reminder, this is frustrating, it but is. it is a game. 
keep in mind the family chat. And let's go beat those raisins. Raisins. Baltimore raisins. Somebody yeah. has a really good memory here. The Baltimore Raisins. She's not smiling in the background right now. That's because she's not <laughs> listening to us over there. She's doing something else. Oh, DK. now she just she just she just offered a friendly smile here, like one of those ones where she she knows you're talking about her, but she doesn't particularly she care. Here, Baltimore Raisins, <laughs> man. It's ugly, uh, and there's no other way to say it. Um, and here's, I hope we get Glenn Tom Thomas. I do want to see what it look like. If for anything, let let him get a trial run with this. And we'll see what it looked like on the other end. But one year is not like the other, though, either. Paul's got a good one for you here. We're going to just take a couple more today. He says, hey, Moan, do the Steelers script their first so many plays? Did they do that under you? They've been notoriously slow to start under both Matt Canada and Randy Feetner. Only now we don't have Ben to bail us out in the fourth quarter. Quarterback means a lot. Yes, you script every weekend. Every single because of the offense, every game you can predict what you're going to do and what they're going to do to you. Um, and sometimes it's just bad like that, too. We had those conversations with Colt Randy. We got to get started fast. We did and take shots, go no huddle, let it put ball go to Ben's hand. You don't have that blanket anymore. And sometimes it's also really good, like Houston scripting the other day. That first drive. Every little piece of it, you know, yeah. up to and including when they got stunted down at the goal line and had to recover and had to, then had to go and pick up the yards on the penalties again. They still found a way to pound it in because they just had so many good yeah. plays. We we waiting. don't know that still still city. I just want to throw that out there. He could be worse. Glenn Thomas could be worse. Is it hope that we're looking for, though? Or, or, or is this, if you're going to lose, make it look fun. That was my college motto when we hired our new coach. If we, At least compete. And three points is not competing. That's fair. Yeah, DeMond says here, we were in a worse position at this time last year. We still damn near made the playoffs. How do you want to lose to Baltimore? It, I think, DeMond, you reach a point where it's been half a decade now since a playoff win. And you say to yourself, we like this group of players that's here. We believe in this group of players. We don't believe in the coaching that's happening, particularly the offensive coordinator, but yeah. the coaching in general. Yeah. We, as, and I'm not taking their side here, okay? I'm staying neutral in this one. But those fans who are feeling that way, I get that. I do too. Okay? I, I, I get that. They're, they would prioritize the change over one weekend's result. Yeah, I fully agree with that. But I, I, I personally see that change coming regardless. It's just a week too late. It's you can just see, you can see beating Baltimore on no, Sunday. No, and then yeah, no, no, yeah. Monday firing the offensive coordinator. You That'd know be why? Incredible. You know why? Uh, you got time. One infraction doesn't correct everything. Wow, it does. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, it, it, it's it's been like this though, DK. The offensive scoring for this team in the last few years has been what. I'm pulling it up as it stands right now mm -hmm. in 2023. We're averaging 15.5 uh, points a game. That's 25th out of 32. In 2022, you were 18.1 for the entire season. That's 26 out of 32, DK. And in 2021, you were 20.2 uh, points a game. That's 21st out of 32. Heck, Coach Randy got let go and was scoring 26 points a game. Oh geez, this one's this one says I guarantee Ben would be a kill it as a coordinator. No, no he wouldn't. Do that. They don't <laughs> no, do he that. wouldn't. And I don't want to be an offensive <laughs> line coach either. <laughs> no, absolutely not, DK. Our last one today goes to Bob Schreiner, who's always got good material for us. Says, why does this team not interview coordinators who have proven they can perform in the role? It's faster to buy my greens from the store than to grow them in my yard. You want to know why Bob, Bob's been on fire today, too, man. He's been livid. Yeah, okay? I wish I could drop like little flame balls there on his comment. Yeah, that's, that's good stuff. Uh, but but here's the thing, though, too. Those coordinators don't get hired as coordinators. They get hired as head coaches. There's an offensive-driven league right now. You can't just go pluck a guy. As a as an offensive coordinator from another team, unless you choose not to go be the coordinator somewhere, the same way I think Kellen um, Kellen Monson, what was his name, the Dallas Cowboys offensive coordinator, 
he went to the Chargers instead. He'd rather coach Justin Herbert is what he ended up doing, DK. Yeah, this is uh this is Kellen not Mon, a great, Kellen Mon. This is not a great situation. This is it's this not. is Kellen even, Moore. Even if they win, it's crazy. It's not a great situation. Even if they win against Baltimore Isaac, at home. I push back on this one. Eric Bieniemy didn't have to. Eric Bieniemy had to take an assistant head coaching job because of his perceived reputation. They're still a head coach in Washington. This is a wash and rinse for him in an audition to try to get a head coaching job. So I'm all, that's circumstantial right there. I'm not going to let you say, well, he did it. No, that's not the case. Uh, now we're comparing Kenny to CJ Stroud. And yeah, that's none of that's going to end real I'm well. With Chris here. G right here. The crazy part if you win, first in the AFC North. I know. Roy, I know. you're right too. This is proven therapy. It is. Roy Baldwin sends in the contribution and said the Ramon Foster show. Proven therapy for Steeler fans. Yeah, but not really. Not today. This is uh, the, no one's going to feel any better after th watching this. this. One, I'm feeling this one today, okay? So can you imagine what the inside of that building feels like? And I keep yeah. seeing the Kendrick Green stuff, y'all. Yeah, yeah, don't kill me. Kill me with that. Kill that, please. Because here's the thing. Anybody, even a broke clock, clock is right two times a day. Even a broke clock is right two times a day. Kendrick Green getting his rocks off. Think about this. You and everybody else in this chat wanted him gold booted. I'm talking about with some metal gold boots out of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Don't feed me this in hindsight. He sucked for y'all, and then he go has a good game with another team that beat your team. This ain't Kendrick Green's Super When your Bowl team rally. is at its absolute low point, by the way, as yeah, well. Yeah, it missed me with that, man. I don't want to hear that one now. That's, yeah. that's, that's a rough day at the office. It's just We've got a couple more contributions to take care of uh, after we do the outro. So here comes the Ooh. outro. We don't even fake it with these things anymore. We don't I like know. We're we here. We'll see y'all after this break. We'll just say, yeah, let's <laughs> close the, credits after the break. That's right. Closing <laughs> credits. <laughs> I, I, I know. <laughs> we just did this I love thing. this crowd, though. <laughs> I love this crowd, DK. If y'all ever, the frustration y'all see with me, you might as well use a rage emoji. It's the same way I know y'all are feeling. Uh, but even more so, I won't tell you you care more than the players. The dudes inside that building probably feel worse than what we got going on. So that hopes of losing, I, I'm, I can't ride with y'all on that one. I just can't. Yeah, there's it's that's a tough one. That's a tough one because you have some legitimately proud individuals, accomplished individuals. Uh, when you start breaking it down to an individual basis, ask yourself: You want T.J. Watt to lose at home to the Ravens? You see where I'm going here? Um, and then it gets a little bit stickier. Yeah, you know, and I just see. Yeah, jo Jonah says the word of the week is apathy. <laughs> I don't know about that, man. No, no effort is what is unwatchable. Look at Arizona, lack of personnel, but the effort is there. They're they're angry. I, I don't know where you see apathy. Uh, I saw a lack of physicality. I agree with the head coach on that. I don't agree with making it the change. Mm -hmm. You know, which is basically what he came out and stated today. That's what he was referring to with his change <laughs> remark, which we all knew was coming. Hey, Ramel, I feel you. He said, Ramon makes me want to jump off a bridge even more today. No, don't put that on me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like no, man. Doing that on your own. <laughs> hey, yeah, you better no. know how to swim or have a parachute is what I would tell you. <laughs> <laughs> don't put that on this show, Ramel. Absolutely not, man. Ooh, uh, me, oh, my, man. More geez. pads. You're right. Yeah. You're right, DK. Oh, wow. Uh, I saw one ask a question, too, about the uh, everybody but the center. That play haunts me to this day. Every time it happens, I get a tweet about that false start on everybody but the center. BJ was wrong, and I told BJ Finney he was wrong that day, too. You can't snap the ball. No, the snap count, man. Our final word of the day are words, our two words, are the only two words that are on everybody's mind today. <laughs> Say it, DK. Uh, that would be Fire Canada, although we've got a lot of emojis today with the little flame balls next to the Canadian flag. Somebody yeah. got clever and did 
flame balls, Canadian flag, poop emoji, and then just multiplied those across the, the scope of the it's a tough crowd, man. Steelers yeah. fans, tough, yeah. tough crowd and a tough time. At least you don't have to deal with what Chase Claypool got going on. Okay. I mean, that's one problem you got to you imagine that. Yeah, I mean, well, it would be nice if the Steelers utilized the player that they got in the Chase Claypool trade. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, which is another too. subject maybe for later in the week. And Mr. Wires, we answered this one already. What if the Ravens destroy the Steelers? Then what? Change. You mm-hmm. said that. Mm-hmm. That was that. That's we laid on that one right there. Yep. All right, guys, we'll do it again tomorrow. Woo! We will. For real. Hump day tomorrow, man. It's Taco Tuesday. Go hit somebody up for some tacos or some street corn, That's a good idea. That's actually a good idea. Uh, You should. All right. Bye-bye.